these are referred to as one-step equations because we, we could solve them in one step. We could also solve them in 100 steps if we take a lot of confusing weird steps. <laughs> so it's possible to do this just one step. So if we look at number 13, what would be the one step we could take to solve this equation? Hildy? Um, you could take negative 2 minus 6. No, yeah. Negative two minus six. Yeah. No. No. I'm fine. Never mind. Derek. Add six to both sides. Add six to both sides. Okay. We got a number n that we want to know the value of. Uh, we know that if we subtract six from it, we'll get negative two. All right. Well, we're at six less than we want. We want a number that's six bigger than that. Does that make sense? We've got the number that's six less than we want. We want the number that's six bigger than that. Or another way to look at it is negative six plus six is zero. Now we're adding nothing to n, which is good. We want to know what n is worth when nothing else is added to it. So 4 is equal to n. We, we could do all sorts of things, and we could, we could have added 7, and we could have divided by 2, and then you know all sorts of different stuff. Uh, wouldn't have made a lot of sense. Um, the reason I bring that up, the reason I, I, I say those, those silly remarks is that um, and I want you to think that there's like this one way and that there's these prescribed steps that you have to go through, and that's the way you do it. The way you do it is realizing uh, that you need to get, or that you're wanting to get that one variable by itself on one side of the equation. And then when everything else is on the other side, that's what it's worth. Right. You can do that any way you want, as long as it's all legal, mathematically legal. You do the same thing to both sides, and if you of a distribution or something, you do that correctly, like do everything correctly, um, and however you do it, you get there, okay? The thing that I want you to avoid, though, is the guessing and checking. That's not really a means of solving it. That's more a means of just plugging in numbers and seeing what works, okay? I know I'm going to subtract a number, uh, subtract 6 from a number and get negative 2, so what would I have to do? Uh, mm, 3, no, 4, yeah, 4 works. Right? That's not solving. You found the solution, but you weren't really solving it. You weren't using algebra tactics. Okay? And if you don't use algebra tactics now, when it's easy, when it gets gradually harder and harder and harder, uh, it's going to be just impossible for you to say, oh, I see 4 is the answer. Okay? And I already, I already uh, was trying to sell that to you the other day, so I'll stop. All right, so we know that the number Q that we want uh, to know the value of. If we were to multiply that Q that we want to know times negative 4, we would get 52. Right, so right now it's 4 times as big as we want, and it's the opposite of what we want. Mm -hmm. right. So how do we counteract that? We want to find the opposite of the opposite, and we want to find 1 fourth of this thing. How do we do that? We counteract that multiplication by negative 4. Even. Divide by negative 4. Divide by negative 4. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drag out these steps so that we see what's actually going on here. Okay. Because what we discovered last class was that lots of us in this class, and not because you're, you're bad or you did it wrong or whatever, but just because this is the way that you were allowed to practice um, in, in previous times, or maybe you weren't allowed to practice this way and you just did it anyway. Uh, and that was to say that if you see a negative 4, a lot of you knew you were supposed to divide by negative 4. Right? If you see 3x, you know you're supposed to divide by 3. If you see 5x, you know you're supposed to divide by 5. And you know that quote cancels out the 5. Right? But if you don't understand why, which we discovered uh, that was the case for a lot of people in this class, if you don't understand why, that makes the rest of it a lot more difficult. Okay, So I'm going to drag up the step to make real clear why that negative 4 cancels out. I will always quote, air quote, mock the, the term cancels out. Um, see, 52 divided by negative 4, I think, was negative 13. Just change, you know, correct me if I'm wrong. Negative 4 divided by negative 4, what is something divided by itself? One. Always one. one. As long as it's divided by exactly itself, it makes it one. Q is equal to negative 13, because we have 1 times Q. And 1 times Q is just Q. We want 1 times Q plus nothing else. That's what we want to get by itself. Uh, I 
next is 28. Now we have D, the number that we want, is divided by 14, which is like a pretty s a smaller version of here. If you take a number and divide it by 14, well, that makes it pretty small compared to what it used to be. It's 1 14th of what it used to be. The number we want is D. Right? This is 1 14th of D, so we want a number that's 14 times bigger than this, 14 times as big as this. Does that make sense? Because this thing's 1 14th of what we want to know, so we want a number that's 14 times as big as that. So how do we do that? Times, times by 14. Mm -hmm. We multiply by 14 over 1. We can rewrite again. 14 divided by 14 is 1. 14 divided by 14 is 1. And this by, or sorry, multiply by 14. Multiply by 14. And you get D is equal to negative Plus one eighth. We don't want plus one eighth. We want plus nothing. How do we get it to be plus nothing? Okay. Subtract one eighth. That's right. The plus one eighth minus one eighth. Well, that would just be v, or not v, v. That would just be v by itself. Plus one eighth minus one eighth. That's zero. And we'll subtract one eighth on this side. How do we add three fourths and a negative one eighth? We'll subtract one eighth. Common denominator, denominator of what? Of eight. So we got how many eighths? <laughs> Two eighths here? Six eighths? Six eighths minus one eighth, that's five eighths. thirds times zero, two thirds of z is negative four thirds. So how do we figure out what one z is worth? How do we make it so it's times one z? One times z. Divide by two thirds. Good. Just like several of the, the problems we've had, um, like this one, um, and I guess, yeah, this one, and, and, and plenty of others will be more. If we have a number times our variable, we divide by that number, okay? Not because we're supposed to, not because it cancels it out, and we know that, but because when you divide 2 thirds by 2 thirds, you get 1. And now we have 1 times z. And we're going to divide this side by 2 thirds. Okay. Have you in this class, or have you in your life ever actually divided by a fraction? Is there a process for that that, that you're familiar with? What about the reciprocal? Right. To divide by a fraction would be the same as multiplying by the reciprocal of that fraction. That's what we've learned to do. Has anybody actually done the division by a fraction? Or have we always just multiplied by the reciprocal? Mm -hmm. Multiply by the reciprocal. It's certainly a, an easier process. Negative 4 thirds times 3 halves. Cancels, twos cancel with the four, that's a one, that's a one, two, four divided by two is equal to two. So z is equal to a negative two. Okay. So all those we can say took one step. We just took one thing. Divide by a number, add a number to both sides. That number might be a fraction, it might be a whole number. Maybe we'll multiply both sides by something. Um, any questions about Quiz or another question on the homework there? Um, question four, number 60. 60? Six zero? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you.
So the tatami mats are rectangular mats uh, that uh, are all the same size unless you cut it in half. And when you cut it in half, you happen to get a square like this. Okay. Um, so this floor is 81 square feet and is covered with four and a half tatami mats. Right? One, two, three, four and a half tatami mats. Uh, the total area is 81 square feet. Um, so we want to know the, the total area or the, the area of a single uh, tatami mat. How are we going to need an equation here? What kind of equation can we set up that involves the, the area of the tatami mat probably as the thing that we don't know, right? We don't know. We solve for it. Could you do like 4.5 times feet? 4.5 times what? E. E? E. T? E. T for tatami mat. Yeah. Okay. 4.5 times T equals 81. Equals 81. Yeah, whatever the area of a single mat is, we have four and a half of them. So four and a half times that area should give us 81. Divide by 4.5. Divide by 4.5. Divide by 4.5. Okay. If we're having a, a kind of a lazy day, we can take out our calculator, 81 divided by 4.5. 18. This is square feet, and we're just dividing by 4.5 units, so this is also in square feet. And part B. Uh, what is the length of one tatami mat if it has a width of three feet? It's asking about the length, it's giving us the width, what else do we know about a tatami mat now? Area. Area is 18. So can we use these things together and make some kind of an equation? Yeah. How so? That's already done it. Hildy? Well, um, area equals length times width. Great. Area equals length times width. Let's write that down. Length times width. And so I put 18 over area. 3 equals L. I mean, oh, sorry. I did that wrong first. 18 equals L3. Okay, I'll just put 3 L just because that's how years and years and years of math is training to do. L3 is still correct. Then what? And then I took 3 divided by 3 and then 18 divided by 3 Excellent. equals 3 times 18. Yeah. 18 divided by 3 is 6. Excellent. Very well said. Okay, L6. Hunter? Could you do problem 47? 47. Similar to our quiz question, number 48. We know what one third of y is worth. We want to know what y is worth. How do we get one y? Uh, divide by one third. Divide by one third. One third divided by one third. Anything divided by itself is just one. And then we'll divide by one third or multiply by three over one. Go back here, that makes sense too. If one third of y is one fifth, then a whole entire y would be three of those things, three fifths. And you can take one third of that and have one fifth. Right. Other questions? Okay, let's pass in our homework now. Thank you.
I'm just going to see what you do with this equation. How you solve this equation. So that would be minus 1 equals 13. And literally we get 1p by itself, 1p plus nothing else, 1p plus 0. So have at it. So what we have is our number that we want to know, times 7. And not only is it multiplied by 7, but we're subtracting 1 from it. And what, what we want to do, it doesn't matter how we do it, as long as we do it correctly, legally, um, we get 1d plus nothing else. So what could we, uh, Dawson, what could we do first? Uh, we, we, could, we could divide both sides by 7. Okay, now I picked Dawson because I looked around and I saw him do that, and it's probably not what most people will do, but I want to show you that you can do whatever you want in whatever order and it will all work out, okay? But here's what you have to be careful of. Uh, most often when someone wants to divide by seven, what they want to do is that. They just want to divide that by seven and divide that by seven, right? What's wrong with that? Nathan? It would come out to be a decimal. That doesn't mean, I mean, a number can be a decimal, right? Yeah, but it's just not right. Well, it might feel like it's not right, and that might be cause for concern for you, and make you go back and check your work. Is that Jerry? I get rid of the small numbers first before doing the bigger numbers. So I that, now, is that right, and this is, is that why this is incorrect right now? Okay, I wanted to know why this is incorrect. We'll talk about the other way we could do it, but I want to know why this is incorrect, Derek. You have to divide everything by seven. Yeah, you have to divide, right? Do the same thing to what? The same to both sides. Both sides, right? Both sides. The whole side has to get the same thing done to it as the other side. Look at this side. This entire side is being divided by seven. Only some of this side is getting divided by seven. At the beginning, it stated that this is equal to 13. In the next step, we're dividing 13 by 7, so we need to divide 13, right? This whole thing is 13. It said so from the beginning. Divide by 7. You have to divide 13 by 7 on the other side. So divide all of it by 7. So if we do that and we carry on from there, it'll all work out still. We'll have fractions, but it'll still be, you know, the same truth is still within uh, that expression. So we have 7d over 7 minus 1 over 7 equals 13 over 7. And 7 divided by 7 is 1, so 1 times d minus 1, 7 equals 13 over 7. Now we have d minus 1, 7. We don't want that, we want d plus nothing else. So how do we get that to be plus nothing else? Sylvie? Okay. Right, add one seventh here. One seventh minus one seventh or negative one seventh plus one seventh is zero. D plus zero now. That's great. So just just d by itself. Add one seventh to this. You get fourteen over seven. 
14 divided by 7 is 2. Therefore, 14 divided by 7 is not 7, it's 2. Saw that a few times. Did we do it? Did we find D? Yes. Mm -hmm. Could it be easier? Yes. Yeah. How could it be easier? Got E to the first. Um, you could take plus 1 on both sides first. Instead of dividing by 7 first, which yeah. is a perfectly fine thing to do, add 1 instead. And divide by 7. And D equals 2. So, yeah, I mean, either way, it all works out just fine. This really uh, is two steps. We divided both sides by 7, and then we added 1 7 to both sides, and we were done. I wrote it in several steps so we could see exactly what was going on. Uh, but this way, it was a little cleaner, a little faster, a little easier, maybe. No fractions had to be involved. Sometimes you have to use fractions, but in this case, we were able to avoid that. So remember what we're trying to get is 1D or 1X or 1Y or 1M or 1Q or whatever plus nothing else. Well, if there's something other than that, add it on. Let's subtract it. Or if it's negative, let's add it. And that way, we'll cancel it out. We'll counteract. We'll negate that thing. Same thing with something else times D. If it's 7 times D, that's 7 times too much. So let's find one seventh of that by dividing by seven. you something that I saw a common, um, I wouldn't say it's a mistake, but it is maybe something that winds up being more difficult than you thought it would be. Okay, I guess the first thing I'll show you is a mistake. Something like um, divide by 7. Right. The, the hope is that we'll wind up with like maybe 2p plus p. This is what I'm thinking we're hoping will happen. Okay, but we, we already tried this. We, we did this earlier. What's the mistake here? You got to divide the whole thing by 7. You're dividing this side by 7, right? This entire side, all of it. Even though it's not much, it's just 54, it's just one number. But you have to divide this entire side by 7. Remember, it's a scale. Right? This side is equal to this side, and if I take 1 7th of this side, I'm going to take 1 7th of the other side. Okay. So then we'd have to divide the whole thing by 7, which means that we have 2 sevenths p equals 54 divided by 7. divided by 7. So that doesn't even go into that, does it? No. So now we have 54 over 7, and the, well, hmm. sometimes equations are difficult to solve, but maybe this one's not that difficult. Maybe it could be a little easier. Nathan? I added 2p plus 7p and got 9p, and then did 54 divided by 9 and got um, 6. Sure. Right, now that it looks like 9p equals 54, uh, yeah, that makes sense. I can divide by 9 on both sides. Yeah, totally. So, but when you put the piece together, how do you know that there's not double the number? So would each p separately only be worth 3? Each p be worth 3. Because you have 2p, so wouldn't that be 2p? Each p is worth 6. If we solve it, then, then p is 6, okay. And so you're saying that, that because there's a p here, there's a p there, and there's... Added. Okay, I see what you're saying. Um, but remember what multiplication is. It's just this many, right? If you have something times something, it's this many groups of this over here. Okay? So saying 2 times p is like saying uh, 2 times 1 apple. Okay? Does that make sense? Right? So that means you have, uh, let's do oranges because they're much easier to draw. Two oranges. Okay? 
And over here, next to those two oranges, I've got how many oranges? Two oranges? Six. Yep. Seven. Seven of them. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. So there I have two of them, and right next to them, I have seven more. So all together, there's how many? Nine oranges. Nine, right? So the fact that these are oranges and these are oranges, like we don't have to somehow say there's two of them. We're just putting together those like terms. Does that make sense? Yeah. Right? So there's two groups of one P. There's a P and there's a P. And there's seven groups of one P. That's P, there's another one, another one. And all together, there's nine of them. We're just collecting like terms. Mm -hmm. Just put them all in one spot and call it a nine. Okay, so P is equal to six. So far, we uh, need to subtract something on both sides, or add something on both sides. Talking like about a problem like this, right? add one on both sides, and then divide by whatever the coefficient is, and there you are. The coefficient, by the way, as a reminder, is the number you multiply by your variable. It's called the coefficient. All right. So we've done that. We've added something to both sides, or we could just as likely subtract something on both sides, uh, and then divide by the coefficient. The coefficient happens to be a fraction, we can do that. We can multiply by the reciprocal. Here we collect like terms and then divide by the coefficient. Um, how does that seem? Seem doable? Should we put, you know, put on another layer of, of difficulty? All right, let's see how uh, we do with this next problem. Okay, these two are for 3.2. Um, those are your pretty standard Categories, yes, and problems. Just two step problems, okay? That's how they like to categorize them. You have one step, then two steps, and then multi step. Okay? And if you want to limit a problem to having two steps, then, well, you kind of limit it. You can either collect like terms and divide, or you could add something or subtract from the both sides and then divide. Um, so we come to 3.3, and this may consist of three steps, four steps. And the, and the process to go through becomes more vague. It's more up to you. Right? And it relies more on your understanding of what we're trying to do here. And I'll state it for you. What we're trying to do is get one, let's say we're solving for x, get one x plus zero. You want to add nothing onto it, and you want to multiply it by one. Whatever we need to go through to make that happen, that's what we're going to do. So we're going to work this one together, and then I'll, I'll give you one like it. This one looks like a combination between this uh, equation here and this equation right here. Right? It's, got, it's got something added onto it or subtracted onto it, or off of it, or whatever, like this one does, but it also has two like like terms, right? Two like terms. It's like we put those things together. We don't have to recognize that. We don't have to like make this somehow a hybrid of that of those two. All we need to do is get nothing added on to one times the variable. So what is something we could do first? What you would do depends on what you do. If you did do it, then that's what you would have done. What would you do? Okay, what would you get? 5x. 5x, okay, combine like terms. 
there any reason why Connor should not do that? Shouldn't. Absolutely no. No, there's no reason why he shouldn't. Okay? Could somebody else do something else first? Yeah. What could somebody else do first? Add ten to both sides certainly could do that as well, because that's also, well, we can do it, because we can do whatever we want as long as we do the same thing to both sides. Okay? And while we're doing that to both sides, making sure we do it correctly. Now on this side, 8x minus 3x minus 10x plus 10, we can combine the, the negative 10 and the positive 10 to 0. And here we get 8x minus 3x equals 30. Here we get 5x minus 10 equals 20. Okay. In this one, what would we do next? Plus 10. Plus 10, just like we did for the first step on the, on the other example. 5x equals 30. What would we do next here? 4 plus 10. Uh, next turn, 5x equals 30. Divide by 5. Divide by 5. X is 6 either way. Okay. Well, I'm just going to send you on your way here. Something that somebody did. Yes? <coughs> collect like terms. We have a 12V and a 10V. We collect them as 22V. Now we still have plus 14 equals 80. What would we do now? Uh, no, I think the negative is. Minus 14. And you get. <laughs> minus 14. Uh, you get 66. Yeah. And then divide 66 by 22, and you get 22. Three. 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 Good job, everybody. OK. So we, can, we kind of put those problems together, right? There was a collecting like terms bit, and there was a subtracting both sides, you know, subtracting something both sides bit. I don't want to. Um, okay, well, that's it for that problem. Let's see what we can do with a different problem. Again, we'll do this one together. Yeah. What does that mean, do the parentheses? What are the parentheses wanting you to do? Uh, <laughs> are you saying you combine oh, oh, six? Okay. Well, first, let's, let's address that, because if, if, we, if you're saying what I think you're saying, then I want to make sure that it doesn't happen. Okay. Maybe I'm wrong about what you're saying, though. Are you saying add x and 6 yeah. and get what? Uh, 7x. Okay. Anybody see a problem with, with adding 6 and x and getting 7x? No problem with that? Jared, is there an issue with that? They're not. One's an x and one's a constant. Nathan? Um, you take the 2 times by x and 2 times 6, so you get 7x plus 2x plus 12. Okay, so you're choosing to do the distributive property first? Yeah. Okay. Certainly can do that. 7x plus 2x plus 12 equals 39. And look at that. That looks a whole lot like this problem, right? Where there's two like terms, there's also a constant being added or subtracted, whatever, and equals a constant. You got it. Collect like terms. Collect like terms, right? We can, we can add these together. This is 9x because they're both x's. That up here. These are these are two different things. You can't put them together. Next, Lily. Can I subtract 
subtract 12, 9 x equals uh, 727. Divide by 9. Right there. First, I'm going to write number 14. Five n plus two times n plus one is twenty. Terms. We got 7m plus 2 equals 23. And notice what's happening here. Like, we have been in this kind of a situation a lot of times. You know what I'm saying? A number of times the variable plus another number, or the number of times the variable minus another number. Or, uh, you know, these, these numbers could be fractions, but it's a very similar thing. Where we get to this point a lot of times. Where the next thing to do would be to subtract 2 from both sides, 7n equals 21, and then to divide by the coefficient. This is a common uh, last couple of steps to take, right? It happens that way a lot of times, do you agree? Okay. So that's it, you know, math is a lot about pattern recognition. Um, so people that say that's what math is, is recognizing patterns. Um, and so that's, no, that's noteworthy. That seems to be happening a lot, so it seems like that's a reliable last couple of steps to probably take. Okay. So like, like if this is our final goal to get m by itself, this is like a, a sub goal right, on the road toward getting this by itself. If we could get it to be uh, all like terms combined in one place, uh, maybe plus another number or minus another number. From there, we've done this so many times we know we subtract this on both sides, we divide by this, and then we get n by itself. Okay? Something noteworthy. Something we will actually take note of with actual words uh, in a few minutes. Someone who's willing to volunteer, what's the first thing, that just the first step that you took, Ashley? Three times x. Three times x? Anything else? And then uh, took three times x. So you distributed? And then you took um, minus x plus 6 and then 
plus six on both sides. And again, look, right? Same last two steps, really common. But here's an idea. Um, how many of you distributed first? How many of you distributed the three first? Okay. Anybody do anything else first? No? No way. In a way? No, no, I know a way. You know a way? No, I don't know. You don't know a way. Okay. So here's, here's an idea. Um, notice what happens. We multiply x by 3, and, and negative 2 by 3, we distribute it. But we multiply x by 3, and look what, what happens down here in the last step. We divide by 3. If you, if you wind up just undoing exactly what you did in a previous step, there was probably like some amount of steps that could be cut down. You could, you could probably cut out some steps. If we multiply by 3 and then later on we divide it by 3, we just undid what we did. So let's start again. And I'm just going to throw an idea out there, unless Ethan's already guessed what my idea is. No? Katie? If you divide, divide, um, divide x on both sides. Divide by x? Mm -hmm. That's going to be tricky. Okay. Oh, sorry, divide by 3. Oh, divide by 3 instead of divide by x. We divide by 3 and divide by 3. We divide, we can, we ask you this. Can we divide both sides by 3? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can we divide both sides by cucumber? Yeah. Yeah, whatever that means. Okay, we can do whatever we want as long as we do the same thing on both sides. Okay, if that equals that, then one third of this equals one third of this. Okay, on this side, we get 2. On this side, what happens? What? X minus two. We're just left with x minus two because three divided by three is one, and we're just left with x minus two. So plus two on both sides, you get x equals four. So sometimes you've got to distribute, right? Because there's an m outside the parentheses and an m inside the parentheses, and somehow you've got to get them in the same place. Either you gotta somehow get m, this m inside this parentheses, which is, I don't know, you know, that's kind of tricky. Or you need to get this m outside the parentheses. And you could divide by two, but then you have to divide this by two, that would be messy. All right, so distributing here, probably the, the cleanest idea we can come up with. Here, there's only an x inside the parentheses, there's no other x's around. Right? And so if we divide by three, we don't have to divide anything else by three, we just get rid of that factor of three and we're left with what's inside the parentheses, add two on both sides, you know, nice and clean. So that's an idea. It's not something you have to do, it does save some steps, and if distributing that thing, whatever that thing is, say it's not three, say it's seven eighths, right? If distributing that thing becomes kind of um, toilsome, it's annoying to do that, and we can avoid doing it, then we might want to you know, put that in the back of our mind in our bag of tricks, something that we could do. We could just divide that out before we even distribute it. Okay. So um, I'm going to let you do one just like that. See if you can apply that idea yourself. So as I, as I walked around, I still saw a few people distributing, which isn't wrong. Not wrong at all. It's not bad. It's not dumb. It's not anything negative. But it, it, if you don't, uh, like I said, put this idea in your bag of tricks, then later you may just be making more work for yourself. You may, if you, if you do, uh, keep this in mind. Uh, it may save you some work. And if you don't keep this in mind, it may make extra work for you. Okay. Uh, keeping this in mind might actually save you having to deal with fractions more than necessary. Right. And that idea would be to first do what here? Uh, 
Okay. So divide by five. Divide by five. Right? Divide by five first. Okay. And before we just cancel it out, I'm just going to reassure you that this is totally on the, the up and up. It's okay to divide by five here. Right? Five does cancel out this five. I'm going to rewrite this as two fractions multiplied together. There if, I want. if I multiply these together, is it the same as this? Is it equivalent? How do we multiply fractions? Straight across. Okay, so in the denominator we have 5 times 1, 5, just like we have the denominator here. And then we do 5 times x plus 3. And to, to actually multiply them together, you would have to distribute. But we can just write them next to each other and say, you know, I'll do that later. I'll multiply those together at some point, right? Whether I write 5 times x plus 3 or 5x plus 15, they're the same thing, right? So the product of these two things is the same as this one big fraction where I'm taking this divided by 5. Agree or disagree? Agree. Agree. Okay. So whether I write it like this or like this, it's the same. What's 5 divided by 5, though? 1. Okay, so we don't even have to deal with that. What, what's left over here? Plus three. Plus three. Plus three. On this side, we have four, of course. So we didn't even have to distribute that five, we just divided it out. Divided and canceled. We get x equals one. Alright? Get the idea? Alright. So let's move on. Work this example together. <laughs> Somebody have an idea for a first step? You don't have to actually do it, just state it. What do you think we can do first? Five. The problem is this five is inside this parentheses, right? And this parentheses is not it's not done. We haven't done the parentheses. Right? The parentheses is grouping together these two things, and it wants those two things to get multiplied by three halves. Right? So until we do something about that three halves, we can't just call this five. This actually isn't worth five. Let's go back uh, to the previous problem. Right? This 3 isn't actually worth 3 right now, right? Is this worth 3? Does it have a weight of 3? How much does it have a, oh, an actual weight of what? Oh, actually, that's how we talked about last time. Okay, hold on. This 3 isn't actually worth 3. What's it worth on this side of the equation? 15. It's worth 15 right now, right? It's worth 15 because it's being multiplied by 5, isn't it? All right, so the next problem, this isn't actually worth five on this side of the equation. Like this is the number five, but on this side of the equation, it's being multiplied by three halves. Okay. So to just subtract five is not quite right. And it's just erase that old school. Question, comment? On the last time we put one, but here's a one in place of x, and we put one. One plus three is four. Five times four is twenty. Okay, ten minus maybe ten to x now. Okay, so we can't subtract five because that's not actually worth five. The value that's not five for that side of the equation is five times three half. Yeah. Okay. Um, so should you push the, okay? Should you divide that half side by uh, three over two? Well, should you is, should you, depend, if that's an opinion thing, should you, you ask yourself that, should you, okay? Can you, we could, okay? We could divide this by three halves, right? And does, does that mean that three halves cancels out three halves? Yes. No. Are you sure? No. You're not sure? No. We should be sure. Here, I'm gonna do this again. Three halves. 
over 3 halves times 3x plus 5 over 1. Whether we write it like this or we write it like this, it's all the same. So I multiply 3 halves times 3x plus 5, that's 3 halves times 3x plus 5. 3 halves times 1, that's 3 halves. 3 halves divided by 3 halves is 1. 3 halves, anything divided by itself is 1. So on this side, we're left with 3x plus 5. On this side, we're going to divide by 3 halves, but we don't like to divide by a fraction. We're not going to divide by 3 halves. What are we going to do? Times 2 over 3 times the reciprocal. Negative 24 over 1, let's say, times 2 over 3, the reciprocal of 3 halves. 3 can divide 24. Uh, 24 divided by 3 is going to be root. Even minus negative, right? It's carrying through that arrow, just cancel the whole thing. Negative eight. Negative eight times two, negative sixteen. Three x equals negative twenty-one. Just subtracting five from both sides, negative sixteen minus five is negative twenty-one. And x equals negative seven. Now, if we had a thought to divide by 3 halves, we're left with distributing the 3 halves into the parentheses. 3 halves times 3x, that's going to be 9 halves x. We distribute over here, that's going to be 15 halves. Right? We do 3 halves times 5. And then we have 9 halves x plus 15 over 2 equals negative 24. Then we're going to have to subtract 15 halves on both sides, which means we're going to have to get a common denominator over here. So it's going to be negative 48 over 2. Minus 15 over 2, right? So it's, it's nice, right? It was, it's pretty convenient that we thought, let's divide by 3 halves rather than distributing the 3 halves. If we could save ourselves that step, we should. Sometimes you can't. Sometimes uh, distribution is just what you have to do, like here. You can't divide by 2 here. That idea doesn't really work. If you divide by 2 on. Uh, on, well, if you divide this by 2, you're going to have to divide the whole thing by 2. And then that's going to make its own problems. You're going to have to have 5 halves n plus 2n, or, or plus, uh, plus n plus 1. That's going to be this messy itself. So it's, it's nice that we didn't have to distribute that 3 halves. We were, were able to, uh, to avoid that. Problem yourselves, your notes. See what you come up with. Okay. So I want to say first, something we could do, we could distribute that eight sevenths. So I want you to get the idea that you can't do things that you feel like you might, couldn't do because I said to do it some other way. You don't have to do it my way, uh, you know, specifically. Uh, you do have to do it my way in that you have to use algebra tactics. Don't just plug in, chug, and guess, and check. Okay? Um, but you don't have to take the exact steps that I take. So we could distribute 8 sevenths. Did anybody distribute 8 sevenths? You did? You did it. You distributed 8 sevenths? Okay. Distributed 8 sevenths? No, you didn't? I did the, I divided it that way. Oh, okay. Distributed 8 sevenths. Jared distributed it by 8 sevenths. I saw some, uh, some students in the previous algebra class distributed 8 sevenths. It's doable. It works. It gets the right answer. It would have to, right? That's what's supposed to work. You're supposed to distribute this 8 sevenths and, you know, whatever w is, get negative 32. But we don't have to. We can't avoid it by doing what? Dividing by 8 sevenths. Okay. I won't rewrite this, but if you feel like you're not sure that 8 sevenths, you know, dividing by 8 sevenths is going to counter that 8 sevenths, it's very similar to this. We just write it 
as the product of two fractions, we see that 8 sevenths divided by 8 sevenths is 1. We're left with 3w minus 1. Divide this by 8 sevenths. We're left with 3w minus 1 here. Negative 32 over 1, if you like, times 7 eighths. 8 cancels with this negative 32. We get negative 4. Negative 4 times 7 is negative 28. Okay, and look at where we are again. A number times a variable minus a number, and the steps are very very similar. We've done it lots and lots of times. All right, we're down to this two-step equation where we add one to both sides, so we get negative 27. Careful of that. Careful of the negatives, adding, subtracting to negatives, and things like that. So we get negative 27 equals 3w, and w equals negative 9. So we've noticed a lot, of last, a lot of times the last step, the very last step that we take, is often what? Similar, yeah, similar to the other last steps that we take. Dividing. Dividing, right? We're always dividing by the coefficient on the last step. Unless it happens to come out, you know, that x equals 5, and there just wasn't anything times x. That just happened uh, to be the case. But a lot of times we are dividing the coefficient. Obviously on both sides, dividing by the coefficient. Remember the coefficient is that number you're multiplying by the variable. The number times the variable, the number that's being multiplied by the variable is called the coefficient. And a lot of times the step before that, the second to last step, just before you divide by the coefficient, what is that? A lot of times. Not every time, but a lot of times. Back. Right. Here we divided, and what was the step just before that looking like? Adding or subtracting. Here we subtracted five. Here we added one. Okay. So add uh, or subtract, depending on the situation. The uh, constant. If you want to be technical about it, you're always subtracting the constant, aren't you? Aren't you always subtracting the constant? Looks like some of you disagree. Let's look. Here we have negative 1. So I'm saying you subtract the constant. The constant is negative 1. If I subtract negative 1, we get plus 1. Right? I'm, actually, I'm actually subtracting the constant all the time. Sometimes that looks like adding, sometimes that looks like just subtracting the number. But before that, before you... Pardon the interruption. Juniors, tomorrow morning is the PSAT exam. Please go to your first period class, and once rule has been taken, bring your number two pencils and an optional calculator with you to the high school office, where we will be boarding a bus. Thank you for being on time. Where are we going, Hmm? Why are they boarding a bus? I need a... A place where you can all be at the same place. The gym? No, I don't know where they're going. <laughs> well, we have classes that take place in the gym. Alright, um, the step before that though, the step before we add or we subtract the constant, is not as similar to every problem. Okay. In these ones, uh, the step before that looked like um, multiply by the reciprocal of this thing that was supposed to be distributed. Or uh, similarly here, we're, we're uh, dividing by this number that was to be distributed through the parentheses. Uh, same here. But back here, the step before was to do the distribution. Uh, and even the step right before this was to combine like terms. Okay. Here. We didn't combine like terms here. We did combine like terms, and then we did those last two steps. Um, there, we also collected like terms. If we go back, uh, let's see. We, here, we collected like terms first. Uh, collected like terms. Um, here, we collected like terms. 
all right? So sometimes we're distributing, sometimes we're collecting like terms, um, but it's not always exactly the same. Here it's almost always these last two steps, almost always. Before that, it gets a little bit more vague. And like I said, it's more up to you. But we can summarize these steps by what we might do to get to here. Right? To get to this point, we do need to have all light terms collected if there are separate light terms that need to be combined. Okay, So we could collect light terms on one side. If there are light terms somewhere else in the equation, you should bring them together. You should unite them. Whatever these steps look like, it's kind of vague, not for sure, not a prescription. You collect like terms on one side uh, somehow, and a lot of times after we're done with that, after we collect like terms, we'll have a number times x plus another number with the add and subtracting of the constant, and we'll divide by the coefficient. I can't give you a step one, two, and three. There's not a, a, a consistent step one, two, and three. Um, collecting like terms can look different in different problems. And sometimes you won't even need to collect like terms. We've done for you already. But pretty good rule of thumb. Uh, here we go. Here's your homework. No, we did three, three point one. <laughs>